So what do we got here? Walking cooler, almost 60 degrees. That's not good. Let's see. Low profile coil. I believe I've been here before on this unit. Because I believe I put that sensing ball right on the fan like that. Because on these low profile coils, the fans actually pull air in and blow it out the sides. Which you can tell right there. That's why the arrows point that way. Now our coil doesn't look froze up. It's not froze up. Our fans are moving. I'm gonna grab a ladder and turn that thermostat up there, see if our liquid line solenoid opens or closes. All right, I'm not sure if it's picking it up on camera, but there's a, a hissing noise. And it's probably, if I had to guess, it's probably my TXV underfeeding, meaning we're low on charge. But first, let's see if we can hear a click. There's our click. So as soon as I turn this thermostat up to 60, my liquid line solenoid closed and the hissing stopped. All right. Turn it back down to my mark there. I put that mark there last time I was here. And we can hear the hissing noise again. So, that's not cool. Let's get upstairs and check our condenser. Hi right, guys, we just got to our condensing unit here. Now it's kind of windy outside and I'm gonna stick my head right into this condensing unit so I apologize for the wind. But my initial glance at the sight glass doesn't appear to be bubbling. It looks to be full. Of course, it could be completely empty, and that's why it looks to be full. So I'm going to have to gauge up to it just to get a, uh, an actual idea of what's going on inside the system. Contactors pulled in. I'm going to test for voltage, do an amp draw on my compressor real quick. I touched the compressor, just put my hand on the side of it. It felt warm, so I'm... Pretty confident it is running. Oh, we got 210, 211, 210. So we're pulling 4.3 amps. Let's see if we have a uh, rated load amps, compressor RLA, 6.4. We're pulling 4.3. All right, guys, let me get my gauges out and we'll get into this a little bit more. All right, guys, follow me now. So last week I listened to a podcast by the HVAC know-it-all, Gary McCready. And it was between him and uh, Jim Bergman. And they were talking about checking a system without attaching your gauges. So that's kind of what I'm going to do first. Just for the fun of it, I suppose. I am going to attach my gauges here in a minute. But before I do that, I figured I'd give this a shot. And kind of do a little bit of math. So my T2 connector, or T2 temperature clamp, is on my liquid line. And it's saying about 103 degrees. My T1 temperature clamp is on my suction line and it's reading 60 degrees so let's look at my liquid line now at the condenser I would expect to have about 10 degrees of subcooling which means if I'm going to take my temperature clamp temperature of 103 degrees I need to add 10 degrees to it so that means roughly that my condensing temperature right now is 113 degrees and it's about 65 degrees outside right now, so that's a little high. 
according to my math anyway. Now we look at our suction side. That temperature clamp says 60 degrees. At the condenser, I usually play by a rule of thumb of about 20 degrees superheat at the condenser. And that could, I mean, that could fluctuate easily, 10 degrees, 15 degrees, up or down. So it could, it could be as high as 30, 35 degrees, depending on your line set, where it's running to. This one, I believe, goes straight down through a wall. So I don't believe I'm running through a hot attic or ceiling or anything like that. So anyway, we take that 60 degree temperature, and we just subtract 20 from it, and that gives us about a 40 degree evaporator. Again, loosely based off of my math. So now I'm gonna attach my gauges and kind of see how far off my math is. As you can see, I got my gauges hooked up here. And right off the bat, I know we're low on charge. My math didn't add up. Uh, obviously because we are low on charge. So I have a negative 12 degree evaporator. And again, this is a walk-in cooler we're looking at. Condensing temperature is 80. It's about 10, 15 degrees above my ambient right now. Let's check out my superheat is 72. That's pretty high. I have zero degrees of subcooling. So all of our symptoms or all of our information points to a low charge situation. So I'm gonna go get a jug of 404 out of my truck. I'm going to gas it up up to normal operating pressures. And then I'm gonna sweep the entire system, the uh, walk-in uh, coil, condensing coil. I'm gonna sweep everything with my electronic leak detector, see if I can't find a leak on this unit. When I initially pulled the cap off my suction line, I heard a little bit of a hiss so once I do gas it up, I'm going to pull my gauges off there, pull my hoses off there and check those ports. See if maybe this is a, uh, a Saturday special of just a uh, loose Schrader core, but we'll see. Well, I've added about eight ounces of R404 into the system. You can see back there, my sight glass is clear. My evaporator temperature is up to 33, but keep in mind my box temperature is still hovering around 55 or 60, so that's gonna be a little high for now. My condensing temperature is right about 30 degrees above my ambient. Superheat's still a little high, but really you're not supposed to look at that too much until you get within five to 10 degrees of your box temperature, of your set point temperature rather. So I'm gonna focus more on my, my subcooling right there, which is, still around zero. So let's let this run for a little while, see what uh, happens, see if my box temperature drops, and then we will revisit this in a few minutes. Real quick, before I forget, I wanted to highlight the change in our amp draw after I got our pressures up to or near normal operating pressures. I believe we were right around 4, 4.6 amps before. We jumped almost an entire amp, so we're about 5.7 right now. So our compressor is obviously doing more work because it has more refrigerant to move. Looks like my evaporator temperature is dropping, so hopefully that correlates to a drop in our box temp. So let's go check it out. All right, so our pressures were within tolerance of what I wanted them to be. So now I'm just gonna sweep the system, check for leaks. I didn't see any oil stains anywhere up here. Yeah, I'm just randomly checking stuff, guys. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. I get to talking and I sort of forget exactly what one hand is doing and what the other hand's doing. I'm not gonna do too much because today is a Saturday. I'm here on overtime. It's almost uh, seven o'clock, maybe 6.30, I can't remember. And I'm running out of daylight, so there's not much I'm gonna be doing. I don't, I don't see a leak anyway up here. 
So there's our headmaster right there. And real quick, I'll give you just a quick summary of what they do as far as I, how I understand them. There's a better view of our headmaster right here. So let's summarize headmasters real quick. And what I'm about to tell you only applies to systems that are properly charged. So this obviously is our hot gas discharge line. It comes in over here and hot gas does go down into this tube. It does not go through this headmaster though. It doesn't do anything inside here. It just stays right here. So keep that in mind. Hot gas discharge in the summertime will go through here into our condenser, condenses into a liquid. It comes out here, a warm slash cool high pressure liquid. It's high pressure. And that high pressure is what keeps this diaphragm closed that keeps this tube closed or this opening closed. So our high pressure liquid comes in through here, goes straight down up around here into our receiver and then out to our TXV. In the winter time, when our pressures are much lower because uh, obviously, obviously everything's colder. So in the winter time, this hot gas comes in over here and already, even if we have say a, a huge load on the evaporator coil downstairs and we're absorbing a lot of heat, as soon as it comes out of the compressor, even in this line, it'll start to condense because it's so cold out outside, if it's 30, 40 degrees out, whatever. So this pressure's already lower, it's already starting to condense right here, we'll say. And it comes down through here, blah, 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 turns into a liquid, comes up through here. But now, it's not as high pressure as it would be in the summertime. So there isn't enough pressure to properly seat or close this diaphragm in here. So we start to get a little bit of hot gas bypassing through here, going into our receiver. And as that does that, this little diaphragm will start to close up on this backside here. And when it does that, that liquid will start to back up into our condenser until the condenser's, oh, I don't know, 80, 90% full, depending on the manufacturer, the design, all that stuff, but 80, 90 degree, 80, 90% 90 full. So this will be full of liquid. And that essentially makes our condenser smaller because since it's full of liquid, it can't, it can't condense anything. The entire thing's full of liquid. We have maybe that much of the condenser where air is actually going through and it's actually condensing a little tiny bit of refrigerant and that little tiny bit of refrigerant still bleeding off into the receiver because this, I believe when it's lower than 55, maybe 30, I don't really know. <coughs> Excuse me. When it's fully bypassed, you'll still get a little tiny bit of refrigerant coming through here into the receiver. And that little tiny bit of refrigerant will mix with the hot gas that's coming off the compressor that's straight bypassing through this headmaster into our receiver. And we need that hot gas to bypass into the receiver in order to maintain high enough pressure to properly feed our TXV. And that's what it does in a nutshell. All right, it looks like we've gone from 60 to 35. We are back in business. All right, guys. As you've seen, our temperature was down to 34, 35 degrees, right where I want it to be. I swept the EVAP coil. I didn't find a leak anywhere. So I don't know if there's maybe just a little tiny leak, because I only added about eight, maybe 10 ounces of R404 to the system. So it's possible we have just a little tiny leak that I couldn't find with my leak detector. but. Tonight isn't the ideal time to be shutting down their walk-in cooler and pressurizing it and doing a very, very in-depth leak check. So I'm not gonna do that today. So I'm gonna leave it as it is, see how it operates. I'm gonna quote to return one day and shut down their walk-in cooler and uh, do a more in-depth leak check of that coil just to be safe. And if they choose to deny that quote, well, that's on them. But for now, we are all set here, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. Hope it entertained you a little bit. Hope you learned something. If you can, go ahead and uh, click that like button for me, that subscribe button while you're at it as well. Uh, share the video on Facebook if you got friends that like cool stuff or friends that are interested in the trades. But for now, guys, I'm going to get out of here. All right, we'll see you on the next one.